Yeah, so supersymmetry is an idea that uh, dates back again sometime. Um, but uh, the easiest way to understand it is to say that every particle has a superpartner. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, every, so there are two types of particles, bosons named after Bose, an Indian physicist, and fermions named after Enrico Fermi. Um, bosons have integer spin, zero, one, or two. And fermions have half integer spin, one half or three halves. And okay. what supersymmetry says is it says every particle has a superpartner. Every boson has a fer- fermionic superpartner. And in the case of exact supersymmetry, where that's a symmetry that's perfectly, um, uh, let's say, uh, respected by the world, then those two superpartners have the same mass, exactly the same mass. So one is massless, so is the other. One has a certain mass, the other one has the same mass. And their interactions um, with other particles are not exactly the same, but in a sense, they're the same. They're governed by uh, the same. They're, they're governed by a very strict set of rules that come from supersymmetry. So that would be exact supersymmetry. Now, we knew that the world was not exactly supersymmetric because we don't see superpartners among the particles that we detected prior to the Higgs. Uh, but people thought that there might be an approximate supersymmetry. And um, that would explain the mystery of scalar particles. It would, yeah. Would make us it would make it easier to understand why the Higgs is relatively light, has the mass that it has. And um yeah, but however, we don't see any of the superpartners. And so now that idea has I wouldn't say it's gone away, but it's certainly less popular than it used to be. Um so that side of it wasn't so successful. Um but that's not why the Higgs why, why the Large Hadron Collider was built. It was built to discover the Higgs. Because yeah. again, we knew there had to be something there. There was. Um so in that sense it's a success.